We're taking ballroom to the masses. Ballroom is here. Welcome to Legendary. We are back. This is the home of Legendary performances. So first question that has been burning in my mind since I started this season is what has this experience been like for the two of you without an audience? I mean, it feels to me like that is such a key component of ballroom, but you've been doing it and keeping the energy up all season without a crowd there. How has that been? It did change the dynamic of what, like, you know, what we experienced last season as far as when the audience was there. You know, the vibe was different, but I feel like without the audience this season, it kind of changed the mood to things. So we kind of, the, the vibe felt a little kind of like, um, like you, you felt more of the passion, you felt more of the energy, you felt more of the vibe of what everyone's trying to say on that runway without, hmm. you know, the, the interaction of the audience. So it just changed the mood of what it was, which wasn't too bad because again, you were able to connect a little bit more better. You seen what was happening in front of you without anything like sort of like taken away from it. So it's, it, it, although it took away what we wanted, it still added a little more of a beautiful gem on top of it. Honestly, for me, although everyone's so used to the crowd being there and we feed off the crowd, for me, it, it was it was more per it felt more personal to mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. allow the talent to just live on that stage and just to be able to execute their performance without sometimes having that pressure of extra people actually watching. You know, it could be a good and a mm -hmm. bad thing. I feel like, you know, like like Deshaun said, it made it more special. For me, I felt like I was more engaged with the 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 um the performances opposed to like season one. Sometimes some of the crowd they would get kind of feisty with the judges, you know, and like that kind of would throw me off. It would kind of throw me off because you know I'm such a witty person, so I would hear something and I would have to like respond and then not be like, yeah. "Girl, you're in the middle of a show, like ignore the people," but like. As far as the show itself, I feel like it gave the audience, I mean, it gave the competitors enough time to like make it about themselves and not make it about like the crowd and, you know, having to showcase outside of just the judges. I, I was also curious too, you know, this being the second season, I don't know, do they feel more prepared the second time around? I mean, they've seen maybe the first season, they, they have more of an idea what to expect from the competition. Does that change things being this the second season of the show? It, it kind of gave, you know, a little heads up of what to expect, you know, compared to season one where they just went straight into it. Um, I, I guess what happens is, you know, now as things get, you know, it presents itself and we get, you know, season two here, you got to change things up and not give them the same kind of like, you know, draft you gave them for season one. You kind of add a little bit of spice to it so each and every category can like change things up. So I, I think it's, it, the houses just came as you can see this season they came and they were ready and you're able to see each and every house for who they are and you know you get to love you know what you love about them and then you get to look mm -hmm. at other houses and be like no i don't like the house i don't like that house. <laughs> you know because people that that's that's the response i'm getting now from people they'll tell me what they like about what house and they tell me what they don't like about another house you know and it's it, it becomes that so season two they came prepared but they came ready and but they were hungry mm -hmm. you can tell I feel like one thing that people don't realize that in the competition, although, yes, some of the competitors were ready based on like the challenges and they know they were getting a challenge. They knew they would have to come for certain categories, but the actual work that it takes for them to put the performances together, I feel like they're never going to be prepared, especially <laughs> because we, we come from ballroom. Like for us yeah. to prepare for a ball, we found out about a ball weeks prior. So we know about the categories. We have meetings with our house members where we're mm -hmm. like, you're going to wear this. I'm going to wear that. We prepare. We have more time to actually prepare. They literally have less than a week to put together different performances. So that to them is the challenge. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when it comes to the competition, they were prepared. But I feel like when it came to the building, I feel like that's something that it's going to take, it's going to take them a while. And I feel like you never, you're never prepared for that, honestly. You're never prepared for that. I'm going to throw out there that I'm going to come out as a huge uh, Vogue Evolution stand. Like I saw you guys right. on Dance Crew back in the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about going back and revisiting clips from that show. You you as a group really were there to compete, but then you were also kind of expected to like teach the audience, teach us broader audience about ballroom, about 
even just broadly the LGBTQ community, how, Mm -hmm. looking back on that, I'm curious what that experience was like for you, but then also how do you think that's changed for like, the houses, the competitors on your show now? Do you think that it's a different world and maybe that they don't have to present themselves in such a specific way anymore? I I agree. Honestly, I feel like for us, the model behind Vogue Evolution for us, our goal was to literally go on the show and educate them on where Mm -hmm. Vogue came from and to educate them about ballroom culture and how important ballroom was to us. And And to also show the world that voguing should be respected as a dance form because back then they didn't look at it like that it looked at it was like that was the gay dance it's like a mockery they didn't see and they didn't respect the value of what voguing is and the true artistry of that it took vogue evolution and me and day sean to because it, it took work even after america's best dance mm-hmm. school america's best dance school was the catapult of it it's like okay here you have five individuals who come from a a culture and from an underground community. And here they are, not only are they in the competition, like you explained, but we had, we felt like we had to be a specific way, even working with, with like production and stuff, they expected the guys to be flaring and be extra and all this Mm -hmm. other thing. They were, they, they felt like, okay, the world knows the gay or LGBT community to be a specific thing. So you need to beat that. And we weren't there for that, you know? We were there to be our true selves and to explain where we come from and what is our experiences and the fact that we should be respected as human beings and we and this is our dance and this, this is our culture and we deserve to be celebrated. I feel like now it's easier. It's easier for us. It was hard to even be on that platform and me as a woman of trans experience to even have to talk about Oh, hey, here I am and I'm trans. And that's something that for me, it didn't work in my favor being on the show because I didn't want to sell my trans story. I didn't want to be out there. And that's what they wanted. They wanted pictures. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to sell my story. I personally didn't feel the need for that. I didn't feel that. A lot of the interviews that I was having, they were like, oh, so tell them, tell me, explain to me being the, the face of trans. Like they made me feel like I had to be this person. And I didn't like that. I didn't want mm. that. That's not why I was there. And because I didn't give them that, they wrote me out to be, you know, a bitch, to be a diva, to be this person who was hard to work with. Now this show, they don't have to ha- go through half of that. They're able to be themselves. Nowadays, in 2021, being your most authentic self will get you the furthest. And that's what the show has. That's what, you know, Vogue Evolution did. They broke these walls down and opened up these doors for a place like Legendary to happen and for a place where you don't have to outsell yourself and be this person that you're not. Now someone can celebrate you and love you for exactly who you are. Whatever box that fills in, or even if you don't fill in the box, whoever you are, true to yourself. Yes, absolutely. I mean, just the way that we get to learn about the houses and, and the individual competitors and it always it's, it's let's meet them on their level. It's, you know, it's not uh, just the way that everything's so organic. It's not about identity. It's just about humanity. <laughs> that's maybe mm-hmm. just a cheesy way to put it, but it, that's what no, really stands out to cra- me. And it's crazy that you even have to put it in that <laughs> term, term yeah. and in mm-hmm. that term. To even say that is like, Mm -hmm. it makes you feel like embarrassed (laughs) to even having to say that. But it's like in the world that we live in, unfortunately, these are the subjects and this is how we have to attack things. And not even attack, this is how we have to address things. Mm -hmm. I mean, Deshaun, do you, uh, what's what's your view of that? I I mean, maybe you want to echo some of what Laomi said, but just the evolution. It's basically like Laomi nailed right mm-hmm. in the head like again we we go back to these moments i remember of us sitting back during the vogue evolution times and they were like you know snap for the camera do this now we were like we are not carrying on we didn't come here for that this is not what you know and again you know as Leon me explained the work that we've done even beyond vogue evolution so we can even get to a place where we are today we travel overseas. We did jobs mm-hmm. with with uh, with celebrities or did with uh, high end clients, and you know we did the job and the work in the field to let people know what how they should and should not treat us as well too. 
Like, and again, if, we, if, if there weren't times that we were in there to step up to make this change, we wouldn't be in such a place right now. And so we're, mm -hmm. you have figures out there in our community who can be identified and, and use that as an example to let people know where the originality of the source come from. Because mm -hmm. that was just the, like Laomi said, again, we, we just want to let everybody know yeah. this is our community, this is our world, this is what's been going on, this is what you've been doing, this is what you've been mm -hmm. doing that you may not know mm -hmm. you have been doing. But, you know, these are like the ideas. I'm just so glad you know, again, me and Laomi have lots of moments where we're like, I'm like, sis, and she, you know, I'm such an emotional sis. I'm like, sis, we have, I'm, look at this. You know, now, <laughs> 10 years later, you know, we, 11 years later, we now get to see two episodes being of a show and experience in such a way, in such a platform, we're able to now guide to where, you know, years before, we was just in the same place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so, Laomi, it was um, the Out 100 2019, you had talked about just bringing ballroom to the mainstream. Um, and you had mentioned, you know, you were like, we can't forget where we started. We can't forget our roots. You know, we can't get lost in this mainstream success. Obviously, Legendary is on its second season. It's got so many fans. This is arguably the, the biggest platform ballroom has had yet. How do That's you true. stay connected to your roots and not get lost in, in, in the excitement and, and, and everything? For me, it's very important to, it's, it's hard when it comes to the ballroom scene, especially in my, in my, in my shoes, because, you know, I've come from the ballroom scene, but not, not, not all of my ballroom career was positive. Mm -hmm. It was like, I dealt with a lot of backlash and I had to fight my way in the ballroom community for my style to be respected. I'm like, I'm one of the reasons why the voguing has evolutionized and has changed to where to what it is nowadays and you know it took a long time for me to it took a long time for me to fight and to be respected so for me the way that I try to give back is by educating the new the, the new generation and giving them a place of 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 of, of a home or like of a belonging like I never want them to feel like oh Deshaun, look at Deshaun, look at Laomi, look at the, like, even Deshaun, he, 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 this is his, his, his persona too. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't want to, we don't want to be in a place where we reach these platforms and we're, you know, getting the bag, like everybody likes to talk and we're doing all these amazing things and we're forgetting about the generation. Mm -hmm. We come from a place within our community where we've seen people who are leaders that are not real good leaders. We've watched people, you know, you know, we've, we've watched people follow the wrong leaders for years. So that's something that I personally put on myself. I want to make sure that I'm the perfect leader. And not even to say perfect, but I say perfect in a sense where I'm authentic. I share mm -hmm. the fact that I'll be, I'll be going through depression too. I share those things. I want to share everything about myself because I want people to understand that no matter where you are in life, you should always remember that you're a human first. You should always remember that you're a person before anything. You have emotions. You have your ups and downs. And I feel like a lot of times when you're put in these like pedestals, people forget about that. And they want to mm -hmm. think that this life is so perfect. And it's like, no, life is not perfect. I want to share with you that, you know, like I had to go through these things and it's okay. And I, I'm a person that you can come cry to. And if you need advice, I'm here for you. A lot of times we don't have that. We don't have people who are open to helping, who open to pushing the person and be like, listen, that's not the path that you want to take. Maybe you can take this one and like, finding different ways to be a positive role model to people in different, different, different ways. And within the ballroom community, like you come across so many different people that your job is never done. Mm -hmm. Another thing about like, you know, to add on to Naomi's, like um, what she was, she was saying, and like, it comes to a place that when you come to the ballroom scene, even though how, how big you are, how fab of a celebrity you may be, <laughs> we have to remind you, we'll give you the acknowledgement when you come in the room, we'll celebrate you, we'll let you know. But after that time is done, we gotta continue on with the ball. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I still love about the scene. Like, although like we, you may be doing what you have to do, yes, you'll receive some love. You have the people pull to your side, they'll talk to you. But when you come inside this room and the ball is going, the ball is still happening. We love you, but the mm -hmm. ball gotta keep going. So <laughs> it's always not too difficult to, to go back to a ball sometimes. But the difficult part is you deal with 
what's left in there, like some of the nonsense that you deal with, some of the shade, some of the things that yeah. you, you know you <laughs> want to let like be away from. And it's like sometimes that like keeps you away from some of the opportunities of experiencing something so great. So you know it comes with yeah. the the plateau. So you have to be ready for mm-hmm. it. like you, you. This is why when it comes to this culture, we want to make sure that like the right people who want to be a part of it are a part of it. Everyone who mm-hmm. wants to contribute contributes, and if you love it, you will love it, and not try to outsource it because we put so much about everything into our love of our family so we can be presented right when we come out there to a ball. Mm-hmm. So again, like I'm always grounded because I still commentate balls to this moment because mm-hmm. I enjoy it. It's fun. And I'll go back to do it mm-hmm. because I, I know what I didn't have growing up or what we didn't have. We didn't ha- have many positive figures who was on television or doing something That's out true. there, performing with artists, traveling the world, teaching everybody and coming back and saying, okay, so, Hey, what's up? What's going on? Because a lot mm-hmm. of these moments during that time, it was a different generation to where things were accepted. So, yeah. you know, again, always being humble by going back inside the room to re- be reminded that there are still, Laomi ate that because when she said it, like, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that the work is never done. Yeah. Because yeah. there's, when we came in, we were the new kids coming in. And when the generation switched, there's new kids under us. So like, you're, you're learning to teach. And then when you get to this point, point in the career, now you just, you're teaching. So like mm-hmm. right now, it's so, it's, we're not done. It's never done. <laughs> ate that. You know, all that being said, what do you hope for the future? I mean, both for, for Legendary and, but just the future of all ballroom in general. Many seasons to start off. <laughs> you need many seasons, many, many seasons, darling. Yes. <laughs> as far as, what I, would, what I would hope is that we get more shows that are not even like legendary Mm because legendary i feel like it specifies only to borrow like Mm -hmm. now i want to see i want to see shows that bring like collaborations of different dance cultures too because that's something that that's something that we need as a community like overall community as in humans overall we need that we need that that unity that we still don't get like, mm-hmm. I feel like, although, mm-hmm. yeah, people are living for Legendary and it's like, oh my God, I'm living for Legendary. I'm loving Vogue right now, but it's not that full unity. Mm-hmm. To me, some of it still kind of feels gimmicky, kind of like, you know, some of these brands and pride, you know, yeah. when it's yeah. like, okay, it's the moment. We're going to use it for now. Like, you know, I just, I just hope that we get to a place where people are actually being celebrated for their talents and for what they can actually do and not only because oh i saw this right now and this is hot for right now mm-hmm. like it should be i want to i can't wait to see where's a longevity of it and not just oh you remember when they had those shows in 2012 and yeah. you know mm-hmm. you know remember that show what happened to that show in the boardroom community <laughs> <laughs> I, again it's just i what i want to see is you know right now i can honestly say there are kids who are looking at myself and Laomi mm-hmm. and even some others in the community and from the culture, from the scene and say, oh my gosh, I can achieve this something. Oh my gosh, I, I can look at Laomi and be inspired to, to get dressed up, to sit there and want to perform, to sit there and want to walk a runway or like, I, you know, again, we now are changing the the norm and what people understand about definitely about our culture, definitely about community and also teaching about, um, you know, how, what's the original source come from. So again, what I'm hoping for um, is that it's open up more shows, more opportunity for the people mm-hmm. in my community who love to perform and participate and you're able to see their talents and see where they go. And, you know, I, I know when you go back to these, you know, movies in the past, like a Paris is burning and you, you hear mm-hmm. the stars of that show saying, I want my name to be on lights. I want it like this is during that time, you know, the, the work they had to do. So, you know, we also put our work in so we can be to where we are now. So I'm just hoping that even those are willing to put the work in so they can still educate so we can have more opportunities like this. Right. Mm-hmm. And That's many, fine. many, many more seasons. Many, many, <laughs> many, more, many seasons. more seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Owning every part of who you are, serving the best part of you, that's what it means to be legendary. Now bow down.